What's going on YouTube? It's Pelfrey. This is my Red Sea Reefer 250. I uh, want to touch base on a couple different things. Number one is if you follow me on any of the forums, Reef Central, Reef to Reef, uh, Nano Reef, or the Big Blue Reef Forum, um, sad to say that Photo Bucket, where I've hosted my pictures for the longest time, has decided to charge what folks are calling a ransomware. So I'm using a third party host. I'm uploading my pictures to Photo Bucket and then I'm uh, embedding them in the forums. And unfortunately, Photo Bucket has decided that they want to charge $400 for this, which really aggravates me because on the bigger reefs, on Reef Central, my thread's been viewed over 20,000 times. And on Reef Central, my, my thread's been viewed almost 16,000 times. And I have pictures from building the stand to where I'm at today. Uh, and it really sucks. And it's not just for fellow hobbyists, but you know, if you go back to a build thread and they use photo bucket, their pictures are going to be gone. If you look up a simple household trick, you know, say you need to figure out how to unclog your sink and you don't go to YouTube for this and you go to one of the forums and those pictures were hosted by photo bucket, those pictures are gone. So this affects a ton of people, not just those that are interested in fish tanks. So I just wanted to forewarn you. I, I was able to back my pictures up off a of photo bucket, but unfortunately, I don't think that I'm going to be able to um, really go back and start my threads over. So I'm just going to take it as a loss and, and try to figure out what I want to use for hosting going forward. Um, you know, maybe Photo Bucket will have a, a change of heart because uh, they're quickly being abandoned by everybody. And, uh, you know, if you pay $400 annually to share your pictures that you own on a third party site, then more power to you. But I don't have that kind of money. So with that said, if, uh, if you follow me on any of the forums and you know I'm an avid forum person, um, unfortunately, we're just gonna have to move forward and I'm gonna have to find a new host. But like I said, I was able to back up all the pictures that I had on there and I do have them. So you know we'll, we'll kind of see what, uh, what happens from there. Uh, the second part is I get a lot of questions on these tanks, uh, the Red Sea Reefer tanks. Um, not just on YouTube, but on the forums as well. I'm going to try to answer a couple different questions. Uh, if you go back to one of the first videos that I've done, which was plumbing the reefer, not doing the hard plumbing, but just plumbing the reefer, I did a uh, almost a 20 minute video explaining in pretty good detail exactly how to plumb a sump. And I understand that this type of tank with a sump is a lot of folks first tank. They didn't start with an all-in-one. They didn't start with a tank with a hang on the back filter. They dove right in and went for the Red Sea Reefer tank and more power to you. I think you made a great decision there. So I'm going to touch base on a couple things inside the cabinet that are key there and uh, a couple pieces in the overflow. So for some of you folks, this is going to be um, the basics and uh, you're probably not going to want to hear what I have to say, unfortunately, but I am being reached out to by multiple people that are just getting into the hobby and they have a couple questions. Um, I do want to answer another question on the, the video that I put out of my new water storage containers. I've been asked multiple times, how am I getting water from those containers to this tank? And the, uh, the simple answer is buckets. Um, I fill up my auto top off with a five gallon bucket um, and then I do a five gallon water change. So instead of dragging a hose out and pumps and everything else, I just mix five gallons of water. I bring it over here. I drain five gallons. I put five gallons back in very simple the reason that i have 80 gallons is because at some point um real king might start charging a ridiculous amount of money and i would rather run my roadie a couple times a year than having to fill up a 40 gallon container um, 40 gallons would last me i guess about a month or so it depends on the evaporation rate um, i've been doing quite a few live streams and if you watch those you will probably know that i picked up two more fish so dr fosters and smith had a sale so free shipping over $99. Typically they do free shipping over $149, but since they've they done free shipping over $99, I went ahead and picked up two more rasses. They're alive and they're in here, but unfortunately they hide out quite a bit. So they've been in the tank for about three or four days now. I'm giving them some time. I, I do know where they're at. One of them's over in this area right here. So they are alive and I, I'm very uh, satisfied with that. And I'll just give them some time to come out in one of my most recent live streams i talked about there's a i have a snail in here and i walked past and i kind of looked at it and it has bubble algae growing on its shell 
and I should have done the smart thing and I should have just stuck my hand in the tank at that point and pulled that snail out, but I didn't. I went about what I, whatever I was doing at the time, I kind of snickered about it and laughed a little bit. I said, oh, I'll come back to it. And I've kind of looked around for it today and uh, I haven't found it, but as soon as I do, it is being evicted from the tank. Um, I know that I had bubble algae on another frag over here. No big deal, took it out, scrubbed it off, rinsed it a little bit, dipped it, and we're, we're good to go there. But I definitely don't want that snail um, you know, fertilizing the whole tank with bubble algae, but you know, I have to find it first. Um, one of the frags that I picked up from Toto Gardens is at the top of the tank now, which is probably not the smartest place for it, but it's not, it wasn't doing too well in its spot. It's, uh, it's still alive, but uh, it's definitely lost all of its color. You can see the yellow tank and the blue tank, the uh, flame angel and the melanorous brass and the two clowns are all doing great in here. The cleaner shrimp is uh, just minding its own business, just looking for food to eat and scavenge. I am having to scrape coralline algae off of the overflow box um, probably once a month, maybe twice a month. And I, then I try to scrape it off the back glass, but I have it on one of the seams back here and on the gyro pumps and it's starting to um, develop on the rocks and I don't know a lot about coralline algae. I, I don't really know that I'm for it or against it. I know that I don't want it on the back wall and on the pumps, whatever. Um, I've, I've heard, you know, we'll go with the I've heard, but I've heard people speak about coralline algae actually plugging up the rocks. So the pores that are in the rocks, the coralline algae can actually affect that <clears throat> that pour, <coughs> excuse me. So I'm hoping to uh, kind of remedy that with the pond matrix in the tank in, in the event that this thing does become completely overwhelmed with coralline algae and it's moving in that direction. Um, trying to think what else is going on in this tank here. I can't remember uh, if I mentioned it on my last update, but I did add more sand to the tank just because I knew I was going to pick up some more asses. So. The sand bed in the front of the tank is just a little bit thicker now. And then I usually try to clean it you know, once a week or whatever. And I just take the, uh, the coral feeder and go over it. So I'm going to take you now off the tripod. I'm going to show you the Red Sea Reefer plumbing and kind of what you need to know about the gate valve. And by all means, if you have any questions whatsoever, uh, you can message me. You can leave a comment. I'll answer any question to the best of my knowledge. And um, I don't know everything about these tanks, but I know quite a bit and I've done a lot of reading about them so uh, by all means if you have any questions then uh, please reach out to me and if I don't know the answer I will point you in the right direction <clears throat> excuse me all right I'm gonna pull you off the uh, tripod and let's take a closer look at the tank all right now that we're under the hood of the Red Sea Reefer tank ignore the blue piping there but we have the return line so your return pump is fed uh, through this line back into the tank. This is an emergency pipe, and then this is the main drain, uh, main drain, excuse me. So this pipe right here will handle um, the majority of your flow. If for whatever reason this pipe um, became clogged, then the emergency is going to kick in, and this will handle the flow so that the tank doesn't overflow. The important thing to remember here is that this is a Herbie style um, overflow method. It's the Herbie style overflow method. Um, this is what you would call a gate valve. So I know you've probably seen people that have drilled their tanks or had Synergy Reef overflows or or they're reef ready and they've added uh, gate valves or ball valves to it. This is a, a gate valve. <clears throat> the important thing to understand here is that less is more when you're tuning this valve. If you make like a half a turn or a full turn, you've probably adjusted it too much. You only want to make like quarter inch turns, like very, very small turns. And the other important part, part to uh, keep in mind is any adjustment that you make, it's going to take the tank a little bit of time to catch up to the adjustment that you made. So don't adjust it, you know, a quarter of an inch and then wait, you know, 10 seconds and say, well, maybe I need to adjust it some more. I would adjust it and then maybe even wait five minutes. You might not have to wait that long, but I would give it definitely some time before I made any more adjustments to it. But it is important to keep in mind that less is more when you're tuning this valve. Um, I've been asked a couple times how these pipes go into the Red Sea Reefer and if any Teflon tape uh, is needed. 
the answer to that question is no. I know it's hard to see, I'm sorry. The, uh, you do not use any Teflon tape. These pipes come uh, straight out of the box and you just hook them in. You have to use a little bit of force to uh, get the pipes in there and then you'll tighten down this, what we would call a bulkhead. Um, well, I don't know if I, that, that might not be the correct, uh, we'll call it a nut for the, the sake of the video. So you're gonna push the pipe, this stand pipe up, and then you're gonna tighten this nut down. There's, you don't have, there's no reason to use uh, any Teflon tape whatsoever. Um, and, and again, if you have any questions and I'm not explaining it well enough, then please let me know and I will do my best to, uh, to uh, answer those questions. Um, this green hose is the hose that comes with the Red Sea Reefer. And I have a half inch barb going into that hose. You can fit uh, probably a three quarter inch barb in there. So if you have a return pump that has three quarter inch, you can more than likely fit that onto that hose. You're just gonna have to heat that hose up with either putting it in hot water or uh, you know maybe using a blow dryer. I would use a heat gun if you don't have a heat gun. Um, get one from Amazon, eBay, Harbor Freight, whatever. You can get them cheap. And I use, uh, use that thing a couple times a year. So it's well worth having in the toolbox. All right, let's take a look at the overflow box. So this is at the top of the tank and you can see the coralline algae that's growing on there. So we're gonna start from left and go to right. So this is your return, this is your emergency, and this is your full siphon drain. Red Sea Brink gives you this piece, it just slides down there and it helps to uh, reduce the noise as well as draw water from the bottom so that the overflow box doesn't get full of uh, you know, fish poop and all that good stuff. So you want the majority of your flow going through this drain. I like to leave a little bit of flow going down the emergency drain. You can see that I have, I mean, it's not a huge amount of water, but it's silent, it's still silent. And then as far as the uh, return, you just hook it up with all the Red Sea fittings and you're good to go, unless you decide to do a uh, modified return nozzle and there's a, a million different options as far as these are concerned. So once again, this is the full siphon emergency drain and return line. So your return pump is pumping water through here. Your water is being fed back to the sump through this pipe and then maybe a little bit of water through this pipe. And once again, if I'm not explaining this uh, 100%, then please let me know. The beautiful thing about owning an Apex is I can turn the gyre pumps off with just the swipe of a button. So I have the gyre pumps off right now. The return is still running. You can see that there's not a, a lot of surface agitation or flow going on and that's just fine. It's returning well, filtered water back into the tank. I'm not using it for any type of uh, movement. So I'm fine with that. So this is the, um, if I could point to it, this frag right here is the one that is uh, what I believe still alive. However, it is lost completely all of its color. I know I probably don't have it in the uh, optimal position now, but it was over in this area and it wasn't doing so hot. So I've moved it up here and uh, we'll kind of see how it's, uh, see how it goes from there. You can see the uh, Zoas there, you know, they're actually pretty colorful. It's a shame that I just don't like them that much. Then we have a little hammer there and that thing's done pretty well. It's been up here for quite some time. We'll just continue with the uh, top down shots since I got the gyre pumps off. You can see there to the left is uh, some acans and a recordia and the scalemia. Then we have the uh, euphilias over here. There's a hammer in the middle and a couple more hammers over there on the sand bed. We've got a bird's nest there. We've got a Kessel light shining right in the middle there. I joke. The tank looks pretty strange with no flow on it that's for sure we have you know I, I, I'm bad about the names of these uh, SPS frags but there is a recordia there in the back and then there's a piece of SPS and there's a piece of SPS that's that's how I'm going to explain them and it's kind of interesting because if you see there on the tip of my finger and see if I can point my finger in the right place there um, the bubble tip anemone that I had has split recently. So I have one guy there and then one guy there. And they're doing good. They, they, they seem to be doing all right. Might have to make that a 
thumbnail picture right there. <clears throat> Go through this a little bit. There's the rass that popped out of there. The blue tank is hiding out. The rass was right in that crevice there, but he is gone. You can see the coralline algae has built up on the rocks there, there. So everything's doing pretty good. And it, it's kind of crazy because that white rock right there, I can't believe my rock was ever that white. And it's kind of, this is kind of interesting. Um, that's the E. Marco mortar, and that's a pretty good glob of it right there. But, you know, from now that I've pointed it out, you could probably still see it, but had I not pointed it out, you may have never even noticed it. Let's get a close up of the cleaner shrimp that decided to come up here and say hello. That's a pretty cool shrimp. He's molted a couple times, so I enjoy watching him. The rasses, I don't believe, have uh, bothered him at all. <clears throat> we'll uh, pop this off. I've, I mentioned this last time, but this is, and the lighting is poor, but that's an air pump for some bubble scrubbing. And I actually got it plugged into my Apex today, so I might set it up on a schedule. Um, another question that I get is, has the noise on the gyre pumps reduced? So this is the original gyre pump that I added to the tank. And it's kind of crazy because the noise has reduced. Um, at first I was on the fence about the pumps, but after running them for, I don't know how long I've been running it now, but it's been a couple months. Uh, I'm an avid, avid gyre fan for sure, especially, I don't mention it, but especially on a tank that, that is this short. And this is the uh, secondary XF230 that I added to the tank shortly after um, I added the primary pump. And it was noisy at first, but once again, the audible level of the gyre pump has decreased uh, greatly. So let's go back down to the sump. And I've messed with the um, Nile skimmer quite a bit trying to get it dialed in. I've got some good bubbles down there. I just need to get them a little bit higher. But it took me a little while to realize that this bar right here is one adjustment. This is two adjustments. And then the air screw there is a third adjustment. And I've talked to a lot of people and they leave this wide open so that it gets the maximum amount of air. But I can't seem to balance out the water level whenever I do that. So by all means, if you have uh, tips or tricks for that, then I would like to hear them. The pod matrix in the reactor is doing excellent. No issues whatsoever there. You can tell I got some flow going through there because that little guy is moving. So every once in a while I'll open the flow up and uh, just kind of drain it out. And then I'm still very satisfied with the direction that I took on plumbing the uh, Rain 2 algae scrubber. Uh, I know I worked on a manifold for a very long time and ultimately I was trying to do too much, I believe. So I'm very satisfied with how this turned out, you know, aesthetically, it might not be the best looking thing in the world, but I mentioned this before, I'm kind of over the looks and I'm more about functionality. There is the Neptune auto feeder that I've not had plugged up since I put the screen top on there. So, but with the 8020 light mount, I could use it. So let's talk about the Rain 2 algae scrubber. So I made a rookie mistake and I pulled the screen off last week and I cleaned it too much. There was a good deal of algae growing on the screen and I decided that I was going to uh, take the standpipe out and widen, widen the pipe. So you can see now that there's no more spray of water because I took a Dremel and I opened up the slot. So all of the water is covering the screen nicely. Unfortunately for me, I made a dumb mistake and I cleaned off what should have been um, the algae that would seed the screen. So now I'm just gonna have to uh, run with it. And you can see there, there's some coralline algae growing down there. And I did take some rubber fittings. It's hard to see, but I took some rubber fittings there and I'm trying to uh, minimize the amount of water that is coming out of anything else except for the slit. 
that way that the screen stays. Um, the screen is the only thing that has the flow going through it. So something else I'll touch on really quickly is the screen top. Um, I know that I mentioned this in a live stream recently that I'm getting some salt creep back here on the back of the tank. And it was mentioned to me that the fish are actually splashing the water. And that makes absolute sense because when I had the auto feeder over in this corner with the feeding ring, I used to get salt creep on this side. So that does make sense. And then somebody else left a comment saying that the screen top is uh, maybe hitting the water. And unfortunately, I had the screen top actually rested on the overflow box. So there's like two inches uh, between the overflow box, or excuse me, the water line and the screen. So I don't have anything holding the screen up over on these sides. It just rests on the overflow box. And on this side, uh, on the front sides, took a piece of plastic and glued it there so that it's not intrusive by any means. And I just wanted to mention that uh, this screen top cost me like $15 to build. If you're interested, I have links to uh, a ton of the equipment that I use, excuse me, in the description below. And with that being said, uh, I don't want to leave this video without saying thank you to everybody. I just recently hit 1,600 subscribers, and that is crazy to me. Um, I got, I know I've said this for a long time, but I have one more piece of hardware that I'm going to uh, be swapping out on the tank, and then after that, it is on. I think I'm done with the uh, fish for a while. I'm probably going to um, spend my little allowance money on uh, coral for probably the rest of the year, probably try to get some coral about once a month or so and uh, get this tank going. I can't believe it's been running for as long as it's running and uh, it's, it's hard to believe. It's the longest tank that I've had running for sure. But like I said, I appreciate every one of my subscribers. I appreciate anybody that uh, uh, watches the videos and then leaves me a comment whenever I'm struggling and uh, just helps me out and kind of guides me through the process because I don't know everything. Um, I would venture to say that you know some of this is luck, without a doubt. But I've also done a lot of research, but you know I've barely even scratched the surface. So I'll go ahead and cut this video off here. I do appreciate everyone watching. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe if you're interested in uh, following this journey with me. And I'll see you guys on the next one.